Grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today is the first Sunday of Lent. We began the season this past Wednesday with Ash Wednesday as we gathered to repent of our sins and remember God's forgiveness. Lent is a season of preparation. It's a time where we prepare and get ready for the great three days, for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and of course, Easter. And one of the ways that we'll be preparing here this year is with a sermon series to help us work our way through the season. I'm calling it Lenten Realities, because one of the things that we do during the season of Lent is face some of the realities that are a part of being human beings. Realities that we may not want to face much of the rest of the year. And so during Lent, we take a moment to face our sin and temptation and suffering and doubt and darkness and death. And during Lent, we really take the time to give them a good look, experience them for what they are. But also during Lent, we remember and we celebrate a different reality, the reality that we are children of God. And as children of God, we are given forgiveness, righteousness, hope, faith, light, and life. So we're going to focus this season on Lenten realities. And each week, the plan is to sort of use a popular reality TV show to help us jump in to what our focus is each week, which as I told some of the people who were here on Ash Wednesday ought to be really interesting because I don't actually watch that much reality TV. So we're all going to jump into this together. But today, the reality show I want to talk a little bit about is the show The Amazing Race. Now, The Amazing Race gets people usually in pairs, teams of two, to travel all over the world in a race against the other teams. And along the way, they get to experience a little bit of local culture. They get to participate in all kinds of challenges, and they have to figure out how to work together. For some groups, it really brings them together and solidifies their relationship. For others, it may end up tearing them apart. On The Amazing Race, if you want to win, it takes teamwork. But it also takes perseverance a tenacity to keep going when things are tough, a courage to keep at it when it seems like you're so far behind, and a persistence in the face of failures, fears, and frustrations. Today, we find Jesus competing in an amazing race of his own. He isn't running against anyone else, but he is fighting in some ways against his own humanity and the temptations of Satan. Jesus has been wandering in the desert for 40 days now. He's gone away by himself to prepare for what God has for him next. Maybe he's trying to wrap his head around what it means to be God's son. Maybe he's taking a deep breath before the work really begins. Maybe he's wrestling with the amazing race that he sees laid out before him that ends with his death. Whatever the reason, Jesus is foot sore, weary, and dusty, and most of all, he is hungry. And into this most difficult leg of the race, when his strength is almost gone, and he wishes only to be finished, Satan shows up to throw a monkey wrench into things. And Satan begins to tempt Jesus. First, with Jesus' most pressing need, food. But it isn't long before he is offering Jesus a flashy show in Jerusalem and an easy route to ruling the world. Satan's temptations are well-placed and well thought out. He tempts Jesus with a physical need and then tests him with a test that plays at his sense of identity and finally offers him power. These are huge temptations for us. They are important 
things that tempt us. Our physical needs are of primary importance to us. If you haven't eaten in a few hours, you might start to feel a little crabby, a little hangry, right? Or when we haven't slept so well, we can lose our focus or muddle through things that are really very simple tasks and we snap at other people. When our basic physical needs aren't met, we suffer. And our bodies and our minds will do whatever it takes to get those needs met. How tempting. When you're hungry, is that piece of candy or those french fries or that whoopie pie, right? How tempting is it to catch a small catnap when you know there's so many other things to be doing? And then, after our physical needs, how tempting is it to prove or to strengthen your sense of identity? To do something that lets others know you're good at this activity or you enjoy a certain task. How important is it to remind people about that big win you once had or that great car you drive? How many of us spend our time carefully cultivating an appearance of perfection on social media? Or do something like deep clean the house when you know a company's coming, mostly so they think you have it all together, right? I do that one. And then that third temptation we hear about today is a desire for power. A need to come out on top, to show others who is the boss. A pull to put others in their place and make everything about us and our wants. The temptation to fall into one or all of these is swirling around us constantly. That need to let our basic instincts take over or our power-hungry drive to embolden us, or our sense of self over overwhelms our sense of decency. And at times, it can seem like we just can't hold out against it, that we can't possibly avoid that temptation. It's just too strong, just too much, and our perseverance falters. And it just seems so much easier to give up the race then keep at it. Today we hear that Jesus never gives up the race. Even in the most tempting of times, Jesus pushes back against those temptations and against Satan. He uses scripture and what he knows about God, and then we get this interesting comparison with our Old Testament reading between Adam, the very first human being, and Jesus. And Paul makes this connection between them. First, there is Adam, who along with Eve is tempted and fails. They see the fruit, they hear the temptation and the pool and the intrigue of something they should not be doing, and they give in. And on the other hand, there's Jesus, tempted with some of the most powerful temptations we know, and he is pulled to give in to his physical needs, his emotional needs, and his ego, and yet he stands firm in his trust in God. He does not give in to the temptation of Satan. He trusts that God will care for him and his needs and that everything will be taken care of. He is tempted, but he does not fail. He stands firm in his faith and he resists. Adam and Eve, because of their temptation, because they give in to that temptation, are the first to sin. And their failure brings that sin into the world in a way that we can't avoid or fix or change. But Jesus, the Son of God, resists temptation and goes on to die on the cross so that the sin that we carry will be washed away in our place with God, renewed. Today we hear about the reality of sin and temptation in our lives. And we know that we don't always resist the temptations we're faced with. We know we sin. And no matter how hard we try, we can't avoid that sin entirely. That sin 
grows in us all our lives in both large and small ways, in obvious and subtle ways, in simple and in complex ways. And sometimes we're having a great day and we can resist temptation. And we strive to do that as often as possible, pushing on with the race. But at other times we fall short. And this is the reality that we face. But there is another reality that we hear today, the reality of God's grace in the person of Jesus. Jesus does not give in to the temptation of Satan. He stays strong and he finishes the race. And Jesus stays strong the rest of his life. He stays strong the day he goes to the cross, giving up his life for ours. And through Jesus, we are saved. Our sin is removed and we are able to stand with God without sin. By the grace of God, we are forgiven and freed. Through the gift of Jesus' death and resurrection, we are granted righteousness. Despite our shortcomings and failures, Jesus makes us right with God. Amen.